Television can never come up with anything that the Bible has. There's no way you can make a movie or a television program from the Bible. But all the things do come out of the Bible. All the stories, all the plots. We're going to see a weird one in seven. That's probably been in movies. Horror stories. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Wait a minute. Didn't he just drop dead? So, this is not in proper order time. We're going back in history. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Daniel's now dreaming. Then he woke the dream and told the sum of the matter. And Daniel spank and said, I saw my vision by night. Sleeping. And beheld the four winds, north, south, east, and west, of heaven strove upon the great sea. That would be the Mediterranean Ocean. Kind of battle of the winds. And four great beasts came up from the sea. Diverse one from another. Now, you can't say the first beast is Nebuchadnezzar and Belsizer because they came up. Now, if he said the first beast was here and, and well, all right, then it would be Babylon. Daniel is going to jump ahead off of Babylon to what's coming history, I mean future, prophecy. The first was like a lion. Lion seems to have a very remarkable subject in the book of Daniel. Wouldn't you say so? Dan means judge. L is God. Judged of God. Or God is my judge. And has eagle wings. Now, historically, we're looking at the media Persian government that's going to uproot Belshazzar that we read a few chapters ago. But this animal is called a griffin. And he is the symbol or was the symbol of the European English Great Britain nation. I beheld too the wings thereof were plucked. What is England today? Have you ever seen missionary pictures? They're the best ones. Uh, where your Bible came from, 1611. You ever see how many people look like porcupines and different colored porcupines and how well that queen over there, uh, sodomites are, are, are enthroned and given power and she listens to all the modern music that her grandchildren. The queen has no power. It's a nation that's fallen under Islam. It's been plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given unto it. This nation told Israel to go home, and they took their home away from Israel. Belfort Decoration. Next one. Historical or history, Greece, Alexander the Great. And beheld, behold another beast, a second like to a bear. These are types of antichrist animals. Lion and a bear, as, as David said, I battled a lion, a lion and a bear for some sheep. Pulled out an ear or two. And it raised up itself on one side. And it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Russia has been symboled as the bear. Some people don't agree. That's perfectly fine. What would be the teeth of this bear-like Russian? Death? Socialism? Communism? Devour much of the land? 
Communism, socialism, you never would thought would be in America, and it's not at our doorstep. It's opened the door and come on in and sat down, and it's got the broom and trying to kick democracy out. But historically, it's Greece, Alexander the Great. Next one, historical, is Rome. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, another Antichrist animal, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. <laughs> Laid an egg. You know what fowls are in the Bible? Try to find my blue tune over here. It's a bird. Seven, four, an eagle. Eagle was mentioned in verse 4. This one just says fowl. It does not say eagle. It says a fowl, a bird. Pay attention to words fowl in the Bible. The beast had also four heads. It's a monstrosity. Anything that has or ever has been born, hatched, with more than one head has not survived. It does not live long. It's a freak. And dominion was given to it. Now what country re represent a leopard with three nationalities of black, yellow, and a white animal who professes to be has some kind of fowl as their national emblem that would be America guess who's on top now so Daniel he's having quite a dream here he's seeing lions Bear, bears, leopards, and after this, I saw in the night visions, he's sleeping, remember, in the night. Remember, he, oh, Lord, wake up, I'm Jesus, just really. And they're coming out of the Mediterranean Sea. What about the world civilization comes from that area? We all come from Adam. We all come from from I can't even name the mountain now Ararat and I saw in the night visions behold a fourth beast dreadful terrible and street strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth you recognize iron <coughs> from this book iron and clay it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns you know who this creature is he's not yet he may be now I don't know maybe not it's the Antichrist the lion the bear the leopard so all these previous nations have the makings of the Antichrist before he shows up. I consider the horns. Uh, that's what got Daniel's attention, the horns. If I saw a, a, a lion come at me with eagles, I'd be like, all right, give me my phone, click, click. See, you couldn't, you couldn't make a movie about this stuff. How would you... How would you draw it? How would you film this? And behold, there came up among them another little horn. Ten horns, ten kings, ten toes. Daniel 2, the kingdom, Revelation 12, 3, Satan has ten horns that are ten kings, Revelation 17, 12. You read Daniel and the book of Revelation together. A little horn. 
In of these ten horns comes a little horn, the Antichrist, before, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. So three of the ten are gone. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Second, yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You want to study? I want to know what's going on. You're going to learn about the Antichrist from Daniel, from 2 Thessalonians, and from Revelation. And even Revelation doesn't give you a complete, really detail who the Antichrist is. I forget which epistle John speaks about the Antichrist. I think it's first John. I beheld. All right, here's these animals coming out of the water. He sees one with horns. Each one is, is been trampled by the Antichrist. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. Revelation 16, 14, 19, 19. To the thrones were cast down. And the ancient capital A of days did sit. Whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame. My God's a consuming fire. And his... What? Where did we read about wheels? Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 19. So guess who Ezekiel just told us who this guy is? This is God. With those wheels that we couldn't really study. But to know the fact is that they're wheels, there they are. In the plural. As burning fire. Remember Ezekiel told us that there was an altar in between those wheels? Well, it's a hot altar. Remember there was a coal of fire taken from it? So Daniel and Ezekiel, we learn a little more. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered. No, not thousands of thousands. The Bible does not have a number for billions of billions in the deficit of America. It says thousands of thousands. That's a whole mess of people. And they're not counted. Minister unto God, him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. You know, more of a, more of a number. And the judgment was set, Matthew 25, 31. And the books were opened. This is the judgment of nation. You're looking at the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ. You say he comes down on, on a horse. I know. But Ezekiel saw something with wheels. Revelation says horse. Daniel says wheel. What are you going to say? There's a horse and there's a throne. That's what I'm going to say. I beheld then because of the voice of the great word which the horn spank, not God. Now the Bible tells us that he's going to speak blasphemy. He's going to defile the God in, the, in heaven and all his saints. The Antichrist is going to be the worst speaker of vileness than ever there was to be. And maybe not even speak proper grammar English. I beheld even till the beast was slain. Now another note in there's Zechariah 3, 1 through 6 about the Antichrist. But the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. Revelation 19, 20 and 20, verse 30. Never mind the beast getting shot, his right arm and his, and his right eye, or left, which one is, and he resurrects, makes an image. Forget all that. 
Daniel gets right down. Here comes God. You know what he does? He takes this beast, the Antichrist, and throws him right into the lake of fire. How's that? And what shows you the Antichrist is not Satan, because Revelation tells us that Satan is bound for a thousand years. The beast and the false prophet are cast in the lake of fire while Satan's in his <coughs> chain. As concerning the rest of the beast, the ones we read about, they had their dominion taken away. They're gone. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I have no idea. And there's animals coming back. I don't know. Say nothing. I don't know. If I said anything, I'd be a liar. I saw in the night vision. And behold, one like the Son of Man. Came with the clouds of heaven. This is the same one that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were having a little get-together with. So Jesus shows up to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, and Jesus Christ shows up to Daniel. How do you like that? He came with clouds of heaven. So you read in Amos, and all those, Woe unto you to desire the day of the Lord, it shall be clouds and not light. I forget how that verse goes. You don't want the day of the Lord. You want the rapture. I had somebody in my family, oh, do I want the day? No, you I try it. The day of the Lord is not what you want. That's the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ, with his eyes on fire, burning and destroying anybody against him in his path. You don't want that. And came to the ancient of days. Now, isn't that kind of weird? The Son of Man comes after God. Revelation 5.5, 5, Revelation 11.15. Or, it's Jesus Christ approaches the Father on his throne in heaven. You know, don't the movies ever have, you know, Sir Lancelot and all that? They all they get their nightly things on. They approach the king and the king puts his sword down and tries to chop off the ear or something like that. And he says, you know, go off to battle and have a good time with all kinds of bloodshed. <laughs> And came to the ancient days, and they brought him near before him. Who are the day? Who brought him before him? All right? Brought Jesus Christ before him, God. Who are the day? Us? The ones mounted behind Jesus in an army? And there was giving him dominion. That's Jesus Christ. And glory, that's Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, that's Jesus Christ. That all people, nations, and like, where'd you see that? Who professed that in the book of Daniel? Nebuchadnezzar and Dyrus, didn't they? Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Should serve him, Jesus Christ. His dominion, Jesus Christ, is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Do you know at the very last moment Satan gathers an, ar an army and tries to destroy Jesus Christ in Jerusalem? And God just blows them fire down like he did Nahab and Abihu. <coughs> and they're dead. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body. And the visions of my head troubled me. He's like, whoo, what was that? Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Two of them. Now it's Daniel's turn. Whoa, wow. I came near unto one of them that stood by. You mean he woke up and there was just two people standing there. And asked him the truth of this man. It would be him, the male, I would say an angel or something. Or watch or somebody. And he told me and made me know the interpretation of things. It's got to be heavenly sent. These great beasts, which are four, 
Ready? Ready for a hard Bible. Our four kings. Which shall rise out of the earth. Which shall. Daniel is prophesying not of Babylon. That's the key right there. A seven, four through seven. They are not yet. You gotta watch your words in the Bible. Some English is, is to be learned and to know. Past tense are very important. But the saints of the Most High. That's me. You take 1968 plus 555 BC, put those words again. That's how many years. And then you add, I was 18 when I got saved. You take 1987, add 555 years BC. That's how many years of head that there I am. At least almost 600 years before the finished work of Jesus Christ on the Calvary's cross and the resurrection, which is the gospel, that Christ died for our sins, was buried according to, uh, to the scriptures, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, and those that believe him are saved. There are saints almost 800 years before that gospel was settled. I'm a saint of the most saint styling. Woo! Go up to your Roman Catholic friends and tell them that one. Hey, are you a saint? Oh, no, no, I'm no saint. Well, guess what? The Bible tells me I'm a saint. You know, that's another thing you've got to get in the Bible. Roman Catholic saints are dead. Biblical saints are alive and well. Paul's not dead, is he? Shall take the kingdom. We're going to be in the kingdom. And possess the kingdom forever. Even forever. <coughs> if you didn't get that much, and ever. <laughs> Then I would know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Of the fourth beat. Dun, 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 dun. Who cares about the world governments? Let's talk about that fourth beat, which was diverse from all the others. So he's not Babylonian. He's not Greek. He's not Persian. He's not English. He's not American. He's his own. Exceedingly dreadful. You want to hang around with this guy for seven years? Have you read the bowls, the trumpets, and all that in Revelation? Whose teeth were of iron. Well, that was a reverse of, of Nebuchadnezzar's image. His nails of brass. That's who. His nails, they're hard. Which devour it. The nails break in pieces and stamp the residue with his feet. Isaiah 8, 9, Satan destroys. And of the ten horns which were in his head. The horns in the Bible symbolize power. The strongest horned deer is going to get the, his mate. The weaker horn of the goat won't get no tribal authority among the goats. And of the other horn which came up, that little horn with the eyeball, and behold, you see, you couldn't write anything better than God, and behold whom three fell, three kings, three horns, fallen off, broken off. Even, some somebody probably grab them, put them up on their wall. Even of that horn, the little horn that had eyes and a mouth that speaketh very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. And this horn was whoo, it's there. It was powerful. It had eyes. It had a mouth. It spoke. Disney couldn't even copy this one. Imagine walking up to a deer and seeing eyeballs on his horn and he starts, hey, how are you doing? You think you're going to shoot me? You're right. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment of the nations was given to the saints of the Most High. 
And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. That's the millennium. This fourth beast is going to go down. He's going to be judged with the nations before the millennium. How's that for learning? Then he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom, the kingdom upon the earth, not Mars, not the moon, not Uranus, idiot, which shall be diverse from all kingdom. He's going to have a kingdom that's not going to be like any other kingdom. According to what Revelation says with all the goods, he's going to have a, he's going to have a kingdom that's going to be like Walmart. It's going to have everything and anything and all that you want. It's going to be a profitable export, import, producing country. That all your needs will be supplied by it. Just receive the mark. And if you don't have the mark, you ain't going to do no business. That's how his kingdom is going to be. And shall devour the whole earth. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Now he's not going to destroy the earth. That, listen, the earth is going to be there when Jesus. This means this, the entire globe of this planet is going to be in the Antichrist hand. From North Pole to South Pole, all around the equator, and all the longitudes, and all the latitudes. And yet there's going to be only one place on this earth where the Jews are going to run for protection. And even then, the Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. One world governor over the entire planet earth. And the people are going to love him. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. Got it? Hard, isn't it? That shall rise. And another shall rise after them. So watch out if you start running to a to a government where they start getting kings. I think they almost limited as Obama as a type of king. Deal with the order of president. I'm, I'm not picking on the guy. I'm just saying that's what some people call him. They call him a king, a dictator, and all that. But I'm telling you, listen to me, Americans. Listen to me, American Christians. The Bible foretold. King is coming, not president. A king. We read about president in the previous chapter. God knows the difference between president and king, and he says there are ten kings coming. Another shall rise up after them. Eleven. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Zechariah 11:8. This king that comes up amongst his kings are going to destroy the kings that he came up with. Then Absalom, no, there were some kings in the Bible that killed their own family. Study that out. Study men in the Bible who killed their own family. And you're reading, they are a type of the Antichrist. And I had some names in my head and I don't have them now. I can think of it right now. I just I know there's stories in the Bible where a man has killed his own brethren. Gideon's brothers or his own children were killed by a person. I'm sorry, I don't know. But study that as a type of antichrist, a man that kills his own kin, kills his own group. And he spake great words against the Most High. You think when someone says Jesus Christ or GD, you think that's bad? You wait till you see the filthy mouth on this guy. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Revelation 12 said there's going to be a battle, a war in heaven. Now these saints that would probably be the 144,000. Moses and Elias come down and he kills them. And they have a Merry Christmas. And think the change time. <coughs> we'll see this 1137. And lost. 
Thessalonians says he's going to call fire down from you know he's he's going to think he can change the time he thinks he can change the law he's going to do in the best power he can do to the people of the world say I'm the creator I'm the real Messiah that Jesus there that was me doesn't the Bible tell many shall come in my name many men will say I am the Christ believe him not. And time uh, and shall be given into the, his hand unto a time one. Times two plus one, three. And a dividing of time, half, three and a half years. We are now told the date. The last three and a half years of the tribulation period, this horn is going to take over. How many of you studying Red Daniel out there? How many of you out there can find... Now listen, I'm talk, not talking about a newborn babe in Christ. I don't expect you to even find Genesis, but try to. I'm talking to you out there. I'm a King James Bible believing man. Yeah! If I gave you a piece of paper telling me four things about the Antichrist, what, what, what can you... And I don't mean put Obama and Washington and Hillary and all that other junk. That's garbage. We're seeing the truth, but the judgment shall sit. And this and see that and that hasn't happened yet. That and is the end of the Gentile world power. That started with Nebuchadnezzar's head. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. We're going back to the Hebrews. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominion shall serve and obey him, Jesus Christ. Once Jesus Christ sits in Jerusalem on David's throne, Gentile powers are gone. No more to be of. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Woo wee, that's a long matter. As for me, Daniel, my congregation, my thoughts, my meditation, my thinking, much troubled me. You don't, we don't realize when we read this how serious this is. And the fact is, we're not going to see this. We're going to be raptured before this happens. And Daniel, as a Jew, prophesying about his Jewish brethren in the tribulation period, scares the pants off Daniel. What this horn is going to do in the worldwide system, John, when he's told about that, that woman that sits on the beast, the uh, mystery Babylon, that church system, he sits in, I forget the word he uses, but it's like, he stood amazed that could there be such vile wickedness? Daniel's saying the same thing. Here too is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my co much troubled me. My countenance changed in me. His outward appearance got green, got pale. You say, Daniel, you sick? What's that scared look? <laughs> but I kept the matter in my heart. But he wrote it down. And he didn't tell nobody. He just wrote it down. And we're reading about it. Ezekiel didn't read about this. Jeremiah didn't read about this. And Daniel can read Ezekiel and Jeremiah. As a matter of fact, we're going to 
be told later on, Daniel's going to get to know a little bit of Jeremiah's writing. 